Hi there, my name is Victoria Bowler and today we are talking about how to set up video for teaching elementary general music. This is a requested video because a lot of music teachers are preparing to teach music in a myriad of scenarios. One of them would utilize video. But aside from our current teaching scenario, as we gear up for fall 2020, there are lots of other reasons that you might be interested in learning the skill of video production. For example, imagine a scenario where you have lost your voice. You're in the classroom and you have an entire bank of teaching videos that you've pre-recorded so that you can save your voice and give instruction in a video. Or imagine that you have a substitute and instead of making sub plans, you have a video that that sub just has to press play on. And then your students are still getting you in the classroom. They still have your face, they have your voice, they have your singing quality, they have the kinds of games and instructional style that they're used to. Or imagine that you want to make a video to document the learning process throughout the year and maybe show it at an informants. All of these examples utilize video in elementary general music, and it's a great way for us to practice building a new skill set and being adaptable and creative as we work through this process. So today we're going to talk about the technical side of setting up videos for elementary general music. This video is for you if you think that that would be fun and engaging and creative and exciting to walk through. If you are still in a place in your fall 2020 planning process where the idea of diving into technology once again fills you with anxiety or any sort of nervousness, I would say hold off on this video. It'll still be here when you're ready to watch it again, maybe when you're ready to dive into a new project. So with that in place, here is the process that I recommend for creating videos for elementary general music. Okay, so when we are filming videos for elementary general music, there are a couple things we're gonna want right off the bat. The first one seems kind of obvious. You just need something to actually film the videos on. For most of us, that's a smartphone. This is an iPhone, it's a couple years old, and it does a great job for what we need it to do. The second thing is a tripod. This is, oh, I think this was about $25 off of Amazon. So I will link this or something similar to it in the description down below. I chose this room because it has this big window. So when it's time for me to film, I'll have this natural light coming in. That way I don't have to worry too much about bringing in other light sources. And that is basically the, I don't know, one of the most important things about setting up video at home. People will care about how bright your face is and how clear your audio is. And since the sun is free right here, this is the room that we're gonna set up in. The other thing that I'm gonna add is one more light source. This is a lamp that was $50 off of Amazon and it's made a couple different moves with us. Um, I'm gonna plug this in just to have something a little bit extra in terms of light. That way, since the sun is going to go behind a cloud, I will have something that's a bit more stable here all the time. So now let's set up the tripod. Now that I have a light source here, I have a light source here on the other side of the room. I have space to move around and now I'm ready to set up the camera. The good part about this is once you get your tripod and your camera and your lighting and everything set up the way you like it, you won't have to go through that cognitive process of figuring out where everything goes again. It should be something that you can pretty much set up once and then just rinse and repeat in the future. If you're in a scenario where you need to take down your setup, like if this lamp has to go somewhere else, if you have to you know, adjust the curtains or whatever, I would say take a picture of what your setup looks like. That way, after you tear it down, when it's time to rebuild it, it'll be super, super simple. It's just one of those things that if you can eliminate the friction of some of these technical aspects, that will leave room for you to feel a little bit more excited about the process. So now that we have lighting stuff set up, we're going to move and set up the tripod. Okay, so when we are ready to set some things up, 
Uh, something to think about is where you normally teach music in your classroom. I always teach seated on the floor. My students sit on the floor in a circle and I sit on the floor in the circle with them. That means that as a class, we can get up and we can move around and we can run around, change formations, everything like that. But then we always have this spot to come back to. If you normally teach seated, like on, um, oh, I don't know, like on a director's chair or something like that, you might want to set up um, your tripod to just be, um, you know, mindful of that height that you might be at. So I want to set this up for a couple different scenarios. Um, like I said, when I am doing my own videos, like for the planning binder, I do those seated, but there are also times where I'm up and we're moving around, right? Like we're doing a bunch of movement activities or games or whatever. So I want to set up the tripod one time so that I don't have to keep adjusting it in the middle of the lesson. Okay, when it's time to set up video, the first thing I'm gonna do is turn off my, uh, I'm gonna turn on do not disturb and I'm gonna turn my phone on airplane mode. That way I won't be distracted by anything while I'm trying to film. I'm using the front facing camera. That is a little bit lower quality, but for us, it's going to be just fine. It's gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna set it up so that it gets my full frame in the event that I want to get up and do any sort of movement activity at all. Um, and then for most of this, I'll probably be seated. So I wanna make sure that the shot is how I like it, how it looks right now. Um, I do have a lot of extra space up here, but I can fill that in in editing with like rhythmic notation or with directions, or I can just leave it blank, either is fine. So now we can talk about sound because that's another super important thing. We have a window for light and the cell phone the microphone is going to be totally fine. So if that's what you end up going with, no one will really notice at all. This is a Rode mic that is meant to go on your cell phone. Um, it has a hat on here, we'll take it off. This hat is just for, um, like if you wanna get into podcasting, you need something, or if you wanna use it outside so it, the wind doesn't hit the microphone, that's all it is, we don't really need it. Um, I'm gonna put this on the phone and it plugs in right where you would use your uh, headphones. I think this was around 60 or 70 um, and I got it off of Amazon. So now we can see if it makes any difference. I'll show it to you both ways. That way you can decide if this is something you want to invest in in the future or if you don't notice the difference and you wanna just do it with the camera microphone, that's fine. Um, so we will sing, <laughs> okay, we'll sing Apple Tree, here you go. Apple tree, apple tree, will your apples fall on me? I won't cry and I won't shout. If your apples knock me out. So now let's take it off and we'll see if it makes any difference. Again, ugh, that way you can decide if that's something you want to save up for, if it would be worth it, or if you want to skip it completely. Oh, I messed up my camera. Okay. Apple tree, apple tree, will your apples fall on me? I won't cry and I won't shout. If your apples knock me out. Okay, so this is the video that we have set up with the cell phone camera. And when it's time to actually film your video for teaching, this is where you would bring in any hand drums or maracas or your recorder or anything else that you might need in this scenario. Something that you might consider is having a whiteboard behind you. That way, if you want to write down any song lyrics or if you want to do any sort of melodic contour, anything like that, you have that option. I, when I do videos for the planning binder, I always add those in when I'm editing. That way I don't have to worry about writing big enough that it will be legible on the tiny cell phone screen that students are probably going to be watching these videos on. Um, so we can talk about that in the next video. When you sit down to do your recording, it might be uncomfortable at first. This is something that I'm sure you've figured out from this past semester. It feels like you are doing a performance. If you get on stage 
and um, have kind of like low energy, not that much facial expression, kind of a more conversational form of stage presence. To the audience, it reads very under-enthused. It doesn't read um, very exciting or very engaging to watch. In the same way, when we're on camera, we want to bump up the energy just a little bit. We don't need to be like super cheesy um, and, I, I don't know, we don't need to be super cheesy and talk down to the students, um, but we do want to be just a little bit more expressive than we would in a regular conversation. Just like in any performance, you are going to make mistakes. There is going to be something that you forget on your lesson plan. There's going to be a part in your lesson that you get kind of flustered. There is going to be a pitch that when you listen back, you wish you would have sung more in tune. All of those things are regular parts of any performance, but they're also regular parts of your teaching lessons. When we are in the classroom, we make mistakes. We pitch things the, in the wrong key, or we might um, you, you know, start a song too quickly, or we might fumble some words or whatever. When we're in the classroom, it doesn't really matter to us because we have other things going on, so we just adjust and we keep going. But if you can think back to the last time you were on stage and made a mistake, it's possible that it had more of a cognitive impact on your performance, right? So we make this mistake and then we get a little bit flustered. That is going to happen. Mistakes are going to happen when you sit down to film these videos. You have a couple options when that happens. If it is a mistake that you feel like you can't come back from, you can always edit it out. And I find a lot of peace in knowing that whatever happens as I am filming, I can take it out or I can film the whole thing again. For me, that adds a lot of uh, that adds some calm because I know that I don't have to get it right the first time. So that's that's the first option. You can always fix it in post or you can record the video again. And that's the beauty of this kind of setup. The majority of the time, however, I would say leave it in. It's okay for students to see you make mistakes. They see you make mistakes all the time in your classroom. Um, it feels a little bit different now that it's on video, but if you think of it as trying to show up authentically for your students, it's okay to pitch something incorrectly and then correct it. It's okay to mess up words. It's okay to uh, look at the camera for a second while you get your thoughts together, right? These are things that when you sit down to film, it can seem a little bit uncomfortable, but the more you do it, uh, it's exactly what we teach our students in our classrooms, right? The more you practice, the more you ingrain that skill set. So that's what I would say about this scenario as well. When it comes to adding other elements, like we talked about the whiteboard in the back, um, I have a way that I like to make that notation and we can talk about that in the next video. Okay, so that is a super basic setup for filming videos for elementary general music. You want a space that you can move around in. You want some natural light if it's available to you. You can supplement with some extra lights from your home. Um, you want a camera of some kind. Your phone is perfect. You want a tripod that you can adjust so that you can stand up or sit down or whatever. Um, you want to consider consider thinking about some sort of audio device like a microphone that can help you out or if you just choose to use your phone microphone you'll be totally set there as well in the next video we'll talk about the editing process for this and um, i have a free software that i like to use to edit all of my videos it's what i use for the planning binder videos and we will jump into that in the next video thanks so much for watching